In this section, we're going to cover from base 10 to base n or other bases. Recall from the prior sections that if we went from base n to base 10, we remember we multiplied each digit with its place value. And then after that, we added it up and add. So when we go from base n to base 10, we multiply and add. So now if we wanted to go from base 10 to base n, now notice it's the opposite, right? We went from base n to base 10, and that was multiply and add. If I want to go now from, go in reverse, and go from base 10 to base n, then I had to do the reverse operations. And in this case, what would be the reverse operations of multiplying and adding? Well, the opposite operation of multiplying is dividing, and the opposite of adding is subtracting. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Now we're no longer going to be going from base n to base 10, but from base 10 to base n, and we're going to have to use dividing and subtracting. So in, um, if we think back of how we recall um, divide, division, right? Okay, let's say I had 3 and I wanted to divide that into 26. Let's recall back in base 10 of how we divide. Well, I divide in base 10 by asking myself, how many groups of 3 fit in this first digit? And I would say, well, none, right? So what do you do? You go to the next place value. And you say, okay, well, how many 3s go into the whole number 26? And you would say, oh, yeah, 3 goes into 8 times, right? Then you would do 8 times 3 and go into 24. So let me write it over here. 8 times 3, 24. And that's how you got 24. Then what did you do? So you divided 3 into 26. Then the process is 8 times 3, and you put that underneath the number you just divided the um, divisor into. And now you subtract. And there's the division and subtraction. And then you have 2 left. Okay, D and then you ask yourself that process again. How many times does 3 go into 2? Oh, it doesn't. So what do you have to do? And then you start dropping zeros, right? And then it becomes a decimal. So that process of division is really, it's simple, but yet it's the method we look for. If we want to rewrite 12, a base 10 number, in base 5, then we need to look for dividing and subtracting. Now we can't oh, we can't just say well one's going one goes into twelve so just use the ones place to divide we really can't what we're looking for is this divisor here three we're looking for this divisor to start with and then if we can start with this we can start the division process so the real question is um, what is the largest power of and then in this here I'm gonna blank and put the base that goes into and I'm gonna put blank and then that would be the base 10 number so in this case I'm gonna ask what is the largest power Of, in my case, the base is base 5. That goes into the base 10 number, which is 12. 
So that will be the first question you always ask, no matter what method you use. What is the largest power of the base that goes into the base 10 number that's given? In my case here in this example, what is the largest power of 5 that goes into 12? Well, if I kind of grill this, I know that 5 to the first is 5, and that does go into 12. Then we always check one power higher. So what we're trying to do is get the closest we can to 12 without exceeding that number. So as we can see, 5 fits into, go divides into 12, but 25 does not. So that will be too high of a place value to start with. So this means that 5 will be our starting divisor, like we had 3 there. So that's where we're going to start. So once we find that, the largest power of 5 that goes into 12 is 1. So once we have that, then we can go ahead and start the division process. So the first thing we'll want to do is divide um, 12 by 5 to the first. So we'll put 5 to the first out there divided by 12. And so we just begin there, and then we do simple division like we did before. So 5 goes into 12 twice, and then 5 times 2 is 10, and we subtract. And now notice 5 doesn't go into 2, so we're done with that place value. So the next thing I advise you to do is the chart. Now this is where it really comes in handy. We have the place value and we have the digits. Once we know this information here, that 5 to the first would be the largest place value in base 5 that goes into 12, then that would be the largest place value in our base 5 number. Therefore, we put 5 to the first here and 5 to the 0, and I'll put a partition. And so the digits are going to be the ones that we're finding. Remember, we were always given digits in place value, and then we just write it all out and multiply it out. Now we're going in reverse. Now what we do, the first thing we do is figure out is the, pl lar the largest place value we have. And then as we divide, we move ourselves along to the right into the smallest place value, which is the ones place. So right now, I can tell you that this number that divides 5 to the first into 12, oops, that we got to be 2, that goes into the 5 to the first place value. So notice that largest place value that you start with, you're, you're actually going to find the digit that goes into that place value in that first step of division. Let's continue this. So the next thing you would do is go to the next place value to the right. In our case, it's 5 to the 0. And divide that into, and let me get the remainder, into 2. Well, 5 to the 0 is 1, right? And 1 goes into 2 two times. And 2 times 2 is 2, and you subtract and 0. Now, if you wanted to, you could go to the calculator and put that in. 2 divided by 5 to the 0, and then you'll see that it's 2, right? It's just 1, 2 divided by 1. <clears throat> now, the nice thing is we know that this digit here goes into this place value here. Okay, so every um, place value that you start your division, that you're looking at the you're looking for the digit that goes into it. The moment at that point when you're at the ones place and you get a remainder of zero, then you're done. There's nothing we don't we're not using decimals here until we get to measurement. So here we can see that if, once the remainder is zero, you are done and you should be in the ones place at that point, right? And so now we say, oh, okay, well, 12 in base 10 is equivalent to 
22 in base 5. And again, remember that you can fit more groups of 5 and 12 than you can 10. You can only fit one group of 10 and 12, where you can fit four groups of 5, I'm sorry, two groups of 5 in um, 12. So again, the idea is that five, because you can fit more groups of 5 into 12, that's why you have a larger base 5 number. Okay, so let's try this next example using the same method. So once again, I'm going to write out the question, or start over here, and we ask ourselves, what is the largest power of, in this case, my base is 8, that divides into the base 10 number 35. So when I run through these numbers, I do know that 8 to the first is 8, and that goes into 35. And 8 squared is 64, which exceeds the base 10 number. So now I know that I cannot use 8 squared, but the largest base is 8 to the first. So in that moment, I'm going to go ahead and draw my table over here where I have place value and digits, right? And my place value, the largest one will be 8 to the first and then the 1, so we descend down. And the digits we just don't know yet, right? That's what we find out in this division process. So I'm going to start now, base 2. Now I'm going to go ahead and divide 35 by 8 to the first. So I'll do 8 to the first that goes into 35. And remember that this 8 to the first belongs to this place value. So whatever I get as the quotient will be in my digit. So 8 goes into 35 four times. So that goes into the place value 8 to the first. Right away I do that. Then I begin the division process. 8 times 4 is 32, and 35 minus 32 is 3. Now I can go to the next place value, which is the 1's place, and divide the remainder into it. And that way I can find the place value, I mean the digit number for the place value 8 to the 0. So 8 to the 0, remember, is 1. So 1 goes into 3 three times. And so that automatically goes into this place value here as the digit. And then 3, then I can just go ahead, 3 times 1 is 3, and minus 3 minus 3 is 0. And therefore, at this point, I'm done. So the first part, finding the largest power, you would just run through the powers that you need to see which power, which is the largest power that I can use that doesn't exceed the base 10 number. And then at that point, you can start that process of division. And every, each divisor in your division is a place value in your number. So this table will be much more important than it ever was in the previous sections because this will keep you or you're like I I need digits for every single place value and even if it's zero you still need a zero in that place value because that is a significant digit so what does this mean right so this means that 35 in base 10 is equivalent to Um, 43 in base 8. 